Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Max. I'm value engineer at OneData. And in this session, I'd like to demonstrate how our platform helps you save costs in your SAP BW migration, both during the migration itself and also while you're operating your future system on a new platform, especially when you migrate towards the cloud. Let me first share a couple of challenges that we typically see with SAP BW7 migrations. So, of course, these are huge and complex projects, so a large amount of assets needs to be migrated. And as a direct result, these projects are typically very slow and pretty costly. So, a large number of people is involved over a great period of time, typically multiple years. How are we approaching these problems? So first of all, we want to make sure that you focus on the most important assets that you really want to migrate from your currently historically grown system to the new one. Therefore, we enable you with use case portfolio management, where we first visualize your current system and help you pick out the ones, the reports or the queries that we really want to move towards the new system and really leave behind the stuff that is not relevant anymore. Secondly, to address cost and speed of migrations, we've created an AI agent that helps you translate, convert ABAP routines to SQL statements or other pro programming languages like PySpark, if you're going towards Databricks, for example. And we want to enable your data engineers to be at least 20% faster. it together with some additional assets towards your target system. So for example, we will generate documentation for you, quality checks and data contracts, which further speeds up your developers and lets you achieve a very clearly governed and structured system that adheres to, to standards that you set. How does this work? Let's dive right into our platform where I'll be demonstrating this, this for you. So the first screen that I want to show you is our data map. The data map visualizes all the data assets that you currently have in your SAP BW system. So we read in the metadata, names, descriptions, and technical type from your source system and visualize it. If we go one level deeper, we can see that this map is actually stru structured by technical type. So we can see restricted key figures here. We can see advanced data store objects here. We can see composite providers, and most importantly, we can see queries that you, these are the, these are the elements that need to be migrated because they provide data for, for your reporting layer. And to facilitate the decision of which of the assets are going to be migrated, we can now put a visualization layer on top of that, this map. So for example, we can see usage. Usage means which assets are actually pre used frequently in dark violet and which assets are not used at all. And from this view, you can already see that most likely you will be able to reduce your landscape by about 50%, which of course helps you save costs in a cloud environment where you're paying for compute and storage. To assess complexity of these assets, we can also again dive one level deeper and now visualize the lineage of these assets. So I can click on one and see and give a, get an impression of how many of source assets are used to produce this target asset. And this provides me already a lot of transparency on first, which assets are important and second, how complex are these assets. Now let's assume that this particular item that I've now highlighted is an inventory report and the team has decided to migrate this to, towards a new new system. What would they do? They would go one step ahead to our use case portfolio manager. A use case portfolio manager is basically a list of assets that you decided to migrate and move to the new system. Already here you can see the team has created a couple of assets, for example, a supplier, a production report, finance statement, They've given it a status, they've given it a value. That is something that we actually, as OneData, 
fo always focus on. So we want to focus on the assets that are really valuable for the business. And what is valuable, I mean, this can be expressed in euros in sometimes some cases, but it could be also every other KPI that is valid in your context, in your domain. We can do a couple more things like providing a priority for the migration. But now let's focus on what they would do to create that inventory report. They would click on create new use case, give it a name, click on type migration and create this new use case. And what this brings us now to is our so-called use case builder. This use case builder is a canvas where I can now use all the metadata that I've ingested previously and put it to good use. So we on the right hand side, we have a wizard that guides you through the migration process. And the first step is opening the properties panel and giving this use case a couple more details, which we will now skip. But of course, you can put your functional requirements in here. You can give it a couple of tags for sorting and filtering, source system, target system, and so on. Moving on to the next step, now is, uh, is time to really work with the metadata that we provide. So we show the asset library on the left, and this asset library is just giving you the opportunity to find things that you now want to analyze deeper and in more detail. And in our case, in our inventory report case, we've identified, or the business analysts and the data experts have identified that technical asset that is behind this inventory report is the so-called cube inventory and we can now search for it and find and now drag it to the canvas in the next step i can now show all the upstream assets that are used to produce this data asset and you can see that apparently there's about 20 assets that are required and they put together in a chain in a classical data lineage from here, I can now, as a data analyst, analyze which assets are in this chain. So I can look at the names, I can look at the metadata that comes with it, for example, column names, data types. But most importantly, I can also look at ABAP routines. So we've extracted apparently also the code that is used to produce each of these intermediary steps. So the important question now is, how do I get from this source lineage now to a construction plan that tells me what I need to build on a target system so that it is for one cost efficient and also provides the data that I need to deliver to the business in the end? And the answer is our fourth set setup step setup target structure. So when I click on this setup button, a couple of things happen. For one, we take over the current structure one-on-one -on -one at first and in, represent it in so-called placeholders. So I could now go ahead and change column names. I can also change the name of this asset if I want to enforce new standards or new descriptions. But also we can see that the ABAP routines that are still down below have now been translated to SQL statements. So we provide a starting point for your data engineers to get going with the actual code that needs to be written in order to, inf to, to build the data assets on the target system. Now at this point, I have two choices. Either I can just leave it like it is and do a lift and shift migration, but I could also now go ahead and apply new standards as said, or I could also take out intermediary steps if the data engineer decides that they are not relevant to the target system. Sometimes you have the, the case that for whatever reason in the historically grown system, things are just copied from one table to another with minimal, with minimal transformations in between. So one thing that also helps you is to reduce and cut out intermediary steps that are not required and then connect these intermediary steps again now, when I'm done with setting up the construction plan, I can forward it to the target system. So target system could be, as I said initially, Databricks, could be Snowflake, could be any other data platform that is based on SQL. 
where in this step already one data also generates some documents for you to save time and enforce a consistent structure. So let's look at one specific data asset that has been generated from such a building plan in Databricks. So now we are in Databricks and we're looking at a data asset called production demands that has been created from such a building plan. And we're in the notebook that covers the transformation itself. So we can see that a couple of Python imports happening here, but most importantly, there's already some logic, some transformation logic covered. And this transformation logic has been inserted by our AI agent here. So auto generated from the building plan put here into Databricks. And now the data engineer can look at it and check whether it's correct or whether it needs to have some adjustments. We can already also run some quality checks and write the table to the Unity catalog. And when we're now looking at what else is in this repository, we see that there's a data contract. We see quality checks. We see tests that have been applied already and will be applied whenever this notebook runs. So now from this, let's please recap what we've seen in the last few minutes. And therefore I'd like to jump to the start again. So in this demonstration, we've seen how use case portfolio management helps you to get transparency on your current system and select the right assets for the migration, prioritize them and put together a portfolio of governed use cases in the migration. Secondly, we've also looked at automated code conversion where one data helps you to translate ABAP routines to SQL or PySpark, as in this case, to support your data engineers be faster with the actual migration work. And then also we showed how auto-generated structures on the target system look like to enforce a clear structure and lower maintenance and operational costs because you've set up something that adheres to clear standards and takes again also load off your developer's shoulders to write all that boilerplate code. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this has sparked some insights for you. If you're interested in a more detailed this demonstration or discussion, then please approach us. We're happy to um, have a more in-depth conversation.